All right, hey everyone. Today I'll be doing the Lead Code bi-weekly contest. As, as, and as you've probably noticed, this is my first screencast with a microphone. So I'll be doing some commentary live and I'll probably also go through the explanations for the problems at the end. I'm not so sure how much commentary I'll be providing during the contest just because I'll probably be much slower, but we'll see. Okay. I'm also on a different computer, so my typing is probably going to be a bit worse. Oh, rate limited, that's very nice. Rate limited again. No, I think there's a title class, but I can't quite remember. Alright, should be good. Oop, I know an error. Why? I know an error seems like it's a leak code issue, not my code. Alright, one typo. Hurry up, we could. Good. Hmm, they all have length two. All right, that's done. Six, six, seven, that's says they're done. It seems like a counter problem. I'm just going to use a counter because I think it's easier. Maybe a set actually. No, a set is bad. CL minus plus equals to one. CL minus else. I'm just going to create the counter. Oh, 
otherwise. So we'll create a second answer and divide the first answer. Ten plus 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 two plus Right. Because it's two. Look, then it goes so well. I might not want to divide that by 2. 6, 8, 2. Just comment that out. Please? No, come on. Okay, apparently I'm bad. I'm not sure if that's going to do anything, to be honest. Oh, I probably shouldn't have div divided that by two. Okay, I feel like this is a 2D difference array. You know what, I'll just see if it works. First I'll construct the prefix sum array. That should be R. J All right. Now what do I want to do? I feel like I'm just really bad at these sort of questions. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try a bunch of stuff. rectangles blank I'll try to put something down oh 
mace one should probably be plus one. To be honest, I'm not fully convinced of my own program's logic. Let's see. All right, let's just copy paste that. I'm just going to print this out and see what I get. Index out of range. Hmm. Oh. I'm going to do a minus p minus q. I hope I'm not off by one. I'll try to do plus one and if this fails then I'll get rid of the plus ones. Alright, that looks very wrong to me. Oh. Maybe I want to minus that. I'm not entirely sure. So part of it's right at least. I know that if you prefix some array, the difference array is supposed to get back the original array, but something's gone wrong here, and my brain's not quite good enough to figure out what exactly it is. I'm just going to print out the difference array again just to see what happened. I have a feeling all of these are off by one, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's out of bounds error. Okay, maybe I didn't want to do that. Let's get rid of all of them.
Okay, this makes me think I'm just doing the different summary part wrong. Let me let's let me just try something else. Right now, let's see what we get. All right, that's actually looking quite good. Then now, let's see. If grid by j and plus different. So, so it can't be done, otherwise, we'll say it can be done. True or false? Let's just not print stuff. Okay. Okay, that got AC, so I'm done now. Okay, I don't think I did very well, but let's let's have a look. Hmm. So I think I finished pretty fast, but I did get a penalty, which isn't very good. So we'll see how I go. I don't think it's that bad. But it's a bit unfortunate that I got that penalty in number three. I just didn't test properly, I guess. All right, so I, I guess I'll go through the solutions now. Okay, so for this problem, it's pretty simple. It's just an implementation problem. I just split, split the string um, on the spaces, and that gives me a list of words. Then for each word, um, if its length is one or two, then I'll make it lower. Otherwise, I think there's actually a title method in Python, but I wasn't entirely sure. Let me just check if this works. Yeah, it does work. So the title method auto does it, I guess. Anyway, I won't focus too long on this because it's kind of just an implementation problem. Uh, this is just, I believe it's O of n, time and space. I, I did, the reason why I put stuff in a list and join them is because I didn't want to worry about, I didn't want to worry about doing um, bad string concatenation complexity, although since the length is less than 100, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. All right, let's go through the second one. Okay, so this second one is just, <laughs> whenever I see a links list problem um, in a contest, there's no way I'm doing it with links lists. Okay, so I have a bad O of n space solution, and that's just by converting the converting the links list into a list, then just iterating through all pairs and finding the max. So this is a pretty boring solution, O of n time O of n space. I think ugh, I'm pretty bad at links list problems, to be honest. So, you know, I kind of just don't really want to touch the O of n space solution. Um, I think you could probably just reverse the links list and then like you have another, you reverse the links list maybe and then you have, wait, I don't, I don't know if you can reverse the links list without modifying the original. I'm just really bad at these. I'll just move on. All right. Longest pattern drawn by concatenating the two words. All right. So my code for this one is actually very, very messy because I confused myself with what my variables were indicating. But the main idea is, um, like most palindromic questions, if you start off a string with LG, then most, then the vast majority of the time the string has to end with the reverse of that, which is GL. So you need to pair this first element with the last element. And maybe, maybe you have LG again, because, and then maybe you pair that with another GL. And then maybe you form different pairs of different letters with the reversed ones. And so we're always going to get the front half pairing with the back half and they'll pair with the reverse of the two letters. And then potentially you can have an optional, an optional string in the middle, which is, which has to be a double repeated letter that pairs with itself, I guess. Okay, so my code here is actually pretty bad. I might try to write some better code. Um, I think this can be removed and I can just do this. Actually, I'll keep this for clarity, but 
basically the counter the counter just generates a frequency dictionary and then I have these random variables which doesn't make very much sense if I'm being honest um what was I intending to do here oh okay so answer is the contribution of of two letter strings where uh, they are not equal where the first letter is not equal to the second letter and this is like the max uh, the max number of like the max number of words I can form uh, using um, strings with different letters and then answer 2 is the same but it's the max number of words with strings with the same with the same letter and then T is um, whether it's positive uh, if the middle with the middle string can exist and zero otherwise. Okay, so for I and C, that's just iterating over the set of different unique strings. For each string, um, so the reason you have to be careful is um, if a string pairs with itself, then, then you have to be very careful with how you count it. For example, I have two strings in this example, but I can only form one pair. So if the string is equal to its reverse, then I'll increment the maximum of words with strings with the same letter by uh, this expression, which this expression, yeah, so for example, if I have 10 strings of like, of like AA, for example, then that means I can form um, five pairs, which is, ten, which is 10 words. And if I have 11, I can form the same 10 words, but I will also have a leftover string, which I can use in the middle. And that's why I increment t by ci mod 2, and because if I have an odd one, then I have one leftover, which I can use in the middle. Otherwise, here I just do if i is less than or equal to its reverse, so I don't double count the same pair twice, and then I'll add answer. Um, this min expression is the number of pairs I can make because it'll be limited by whichever of the string and its reverse is less. And then times two is just because I'm counting the number of words and each pair has two words. And then finally, I just sum up all of these, keep in mind that I can only use one string in the middle. And then I times it by two because it asks for the number of characters, not the number of words. All right, that's my solution for that one. Let's just refresh to see how I did. Okay, 11th, but, um, okay, so people are behind me, so I think, I think this is my final spot, it's probably 11th. Um, and then for question four, let's go through it. Okay, so the main idea of question four is, um, we iterate through all spaces that the stamp could be in, in the grid, and, uh, for each space, like, if we can put the space in a certain position and it doesn't hit any occupied cells, then uh, we might as well put the stamp there because that's we can just greedily put as many stamps as we can. So there's no restriction of the number of stamps. And how do we tell whether, like, let's say I, I'm trying to put a stamp here. How do I check if there's any occupied cells in it in, in a fast time? And the way I did it was with the prefix sum array. Um, so first I build a prefix summary on this grid and then I just uh, count the number of occupied cells in a particular region in O of one time and that will give me, um, if it's zero that means I can put a stamp there, if it's one that means I can't put a stamp. So in my code, um, first I'm generating the prefix summary, it's R plus one and C plus one because I'm one indexing the one indexing the prefix summary because I find it easy to work with, you need a few less uh, if statements and conditionals. The next part is how do I how do I tell the how do I find the answer? So I want to know where all the stamp positions are. And the way I've done it is um, let's say I start with the grid. Then for each position, I'm going to put a stamp down. I want to add one to each cell in this in this um, stamp area. So for each stamp, I'm adding one to a particular um, sub array, I guess, a 2D sub array. And the way I'm doing this is with a 2D difference array. So you might be familiar with the 1D difference array and the 2D difference array is pretty much, it's, it's the same as the 1D difference array, but you use like the 2D prefix sum array formulas in, instead. 
Okay, so the key property of a difference array is that if you apply the if you take the prefix sum array of the difference array, you get back the original array, which is the array which I'm trying to find. And similarly, if you take the difference array of a prefix sum array, you're going to get back the original array as well. Prefix sum and difference are just opposites. So in my code here, um, for each for each pos uh, for each position of the stamp, first I check if there's I use the prefix summary to check if there's any occupied cells. If there are no occupied cells, then I'll update the difference array. Now, unfortunately, I don't really think I have the ability to like draw because this is a different computer which I'm not used to. So I don't. I think I'll skip out on the full technical details of how a difference array works. I think it's well known enough. Um, you might notice that these we are updating similar cells to what we would normally do for prefix summary, and that's just because difference array and prefix summary are opposites. Okay, this is the part which I struggled a bit in contest. Um, so I didn't take the prefix summary. I did the prefix summary of the difference array using this formula, but but what I'm actually doing here is first for each row I'll build the one D difference array over that row. And then for each column, I'll build the 1D, pre I mean, sorry, I'll, I'll build the 1D prefix sum array for each row. And then for each column, I'll build the prefix sum array for that column. And that will give me, that will essentially do the prefix sum array of, of everything. And that will give me back the original array. So note that here, difference is only corresponding to the updates, which I did. It's not, it ignores the, Initial, it ignores the initial occupied cells in the grid. So for each space, um, if it's both not occupied in the grid and I and it's not stamped, then then the answer is false. Otherwise, it's true. And um, what's the time complexity of this? Well, the time complexity of this is just O O M N or O R C, how I've labelled it. And yeah, I think that's probably it. All right, 16th, so I've dropped to 16th, which isn't great for me. I'll probably, I'm not sure if I'll lose some rating. I think it'll be probably a very minimal change either way, but hopefully it can increase my, to my maximum, my peak, my peak contest rating so far is 3087. So hopefully I can overtake that. And yeah, so hopefully I'll do better in the next contest in 12 hours time. I'll uh, see you all guys then, uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and goodbye.